Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Pearl Pirate Baseball. We're live at Ridgeland High School, where the Pearl Pirates are getting ready to play their second game of the 2013 season in the Ridgeland Classic, this time against the Indians of Yazoo City. They defeated Northwest Rankin in the game one here today. And uh, what a defeat it was, 4-3. to three. I found out during the break the first time in six years that Pearl has defeated Northwest Rankin. The last time they defeated them was on this field in this classic six years ago, 4-3. to three. <laughs> Wow. Wow. How about that? For some little irony in that. But Northwest Rankin goes down to Pearl by score 4-3 to three as Pearl starts the season 1-0 and under head coach Justin Groh. And now they will get ready to take on the Indians of Yazoo City. You know, the Pirates, a big win in game one, a big win against an arch rival, cross town rival in, uh, in Northwest Rankin, the number five ranked team in the state coming into today's game. This game a little different as they welcome, as they prepare to play Yazoo City. Uh, coming off of game one, a big win, a big high, obviously coming off of that. So they've got to settle back in now, focus in on a Yazoo City squad that comes in here ready to play ball. This is their first game today for Yazoo City. So uh, they'll play now, and then they will play Ridgeland in the nightcap later on today. But uh, the Pirates have to focus in, get settled back down, and uh, get ready. Jimmy Boyd will take the hill for the Pirates as, uh, as they get ready to take on Yazoo City. And it's going to be a big one here. Yazoo City, of course, coming in for their first game of this season, the first game here in the Classic, as they will take on the Pearl Pirates. Uh, and obviously, Pearl Justin's got to have a tremendous amount of confidence. Coach Groves has been preaching all this stuff that he wanted to see, wanted to see happen this year. And, you know, when you come out and you play that first game like they just did, how does that uh, relate, do you think, when it gets to that confidence level that you've got to have? Oh, it's huge. I mean, you know, you come out here, you know Northwest Rankin. They're known for great baseball teams. They're, they've got a great coach. they got great players. They're ranked in the top five in the state. They're going to come out. They're going to play hard. And, you know, and, and obviously, Pearl's not expected to beat them. You know, Northwest is expected to come out and run all over them, but yet they come out, they do it. That's a huge boost for their confidence. It's the first game of the season to come out, beat a team like that, and uh, really step up and say, hey, we mean business. We're here to play. You know, we've been working on, we focused on these key areas. We want to we want to move players along. We want to we want to work together as a team. We don't want to we want to make less errors than we did last year. We want to play smart baseball. They were able to do that. Pitching was great. Hitting came on and uh, defense played well too. And so the Pirates step up. That's a huge confidence boost for game one. Hopefully they continue that here against Yazoo City in game two today. And that's what it's going to take. Yazoo City will be the home team. They had another coin toss. And uh, we've got to teach Coach Grow how to do a better job of tossing a coin <laughs> really or, or calling when it comes to that coin toss, obviously, because he lost the toss against Northwest Rank. Of course, that worked out okay. And, of course, it'd be kind of like Coach Perry we talked about for years losing the coin toss in football. That's right. If you always come out with a victory, hey, we'll, take the, we'll take the loss on the uh, coin toss any day of the week. So that's what it's going to be. Yazoo City will take the field to begin the game. We'll give you the defensive set for the Yazoo City Indians. In left field will be number one, Desi Scott. Center field will be number seven, Trey Richardson. And in right field, number 34, Gabriel Campbell. In the infield, third baseman, number 23, Ralph Jones. At shortstop, number 17, Dontarius Brown. The second baseman is number nine, Jeremiah Durr. At first base, number 12, Andre Lloyd. Behind the plate is number 36, Sam Campbell. And on the mound will be number 10, Darius Wright. Out there making his warm-up tosses right now. Pearl Pirates batting order will start off with Grant Phillips, Zach Carter, Brandon DeSalvo, first three in the order, followed by Zach Prince, Parker Thurman, David Pickering, Austin McDonald, Matthew McGee, Alex Hutton, and Jimmy Boyd will be the dh far pitcher. And that looks vaguely like the lineup we saw in the first game. Uh, yes, it does. Vaguely, vaguely similar. Yeah, and, you know, it's, if it ain't broke, don't fix it, right? right? Absolutely. And, and, obviously, Coach Gro didn't think it was broke, so he ain't fixing it. And so we got the same lineup, just a new pitcher, Jimmy Boyd, who actually picked up the save in the first game. Zach Carter got the start, uh, did a tremendous job. And uh, Zach Prince came on in relief of him. And then Jimmy Carter comes on at the end to pick up the save in the ball game. And we're ready to get underway. Grant Phillips in the batter's box facing right for Yazoo City. And the first pitch is fouled off right side. And Carol Davis is ducking behind his camera to get out of the way up there on the first base side. Hate to tell Carol, but he's small, but that camera's still smaller. It ain't going to protect him a lot. That's right. You got to tell Frank, he's supposed to be protecting that camera, not hiding behind it. You got to tell Carol, take one for the team down there. <laughs> Second print, uh, pitch is fouled on the third baseline. Coach Grow with good hands down the line, reaches out and snags it, throws it back to the pitcher, gets a little applause from his players in the dugout. 
No balls, two strikes to count to Grant Phillips, hitting 250 on this young season. Grounder past the third baseman, took a wicked hop up off of him into left field, and Grant's going to round first. He's going to head for second, throws off line, and he's going to get there with a double to lead off the inning. I'll tell you what, DP, I like that aggressive base running. You know, the ball took a hop off the third baseman, kind of rolled into foul territory down towards the bullpen, and Phillips never let up. He rounded first base, went into second, full steam ahead. Love the aggressive, aggressive base running. That's one of those little things that we talked about the Pirates really trying to do this season. Zach Carter now steps in. First pitch to him. He shows bunts. Going to bunt it up to first baseline. There's going to be a race. Nobody's at first base, and Zach's going to beat out the infield base hit. They're going to throw it into right field, and that's going to allow – Grant to score from second as he was going to third anyway. I'm going to give him a single. He was going to have it beat out for a base hit. But then the run's going to score on the error. It'll be a throwing error by the pitcher who really shouldn't even have thrown the ball. And the runner advances on that same error. So now we've got a runner at second. Nobody out. One run already in. Second hit for the Pirates. Perfect bunt laid down. First baseman and the pitcher both went for it. Nobody was covering the bag. There's a ball in the dirt. It'll go past the catcher. That'll be a wild pitch. It'll allow Zach Carter to advance to third base. Justin has a visitor in the booth. <laughs> he does. She comes bearing gifts. Bearing gifts and food. Fouled off, strike one. One ball, one strike to count. Justin's too busy with the headset. I'll get up and get the hug. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Pitch misses low for a ball. Two balls, one strike to count. Now the 2-1 pitch. Line drive into right field for a base hit by Brandon DeSalvo. He's going to round first and hold up with a single, an RBI single. The scoring from third was Zach Carter easily. And the Pirates here in the top of the first inning have jumped out to a 2-0 lead. And that'll bring Zach Prince, the designated hitter, to the plate. Zach pitched a couple of innings in the first game. Did a pretty good job. Gave up a couple of walks in the bottom of the seventh, and that cost him his job on the mound and gave Jimmy Boyd a chance to come in and get the final outs and get the save. Strike called on the outside part of the plate. No balls, one strike to count. Fouls it off. Count goes to 0-2. Referee umpire is going to look at the ball, and Coach Groves is going to take an opportunity to talk to Zach Prince. Parker delivers a couple of extra baseballs. Now the 0-2 pitch. Breaking ball down and away. Gets away from the catcher. DeSalvo will go down to second base on the wild pitch. Puts another runner in scoring position for the Pirates. One ball, two strike to count to Zach Prince. Now Zach with a hit could possibly deliver another run to the plate. Takes call, strike three. Good looking pitch. Don't know what Zach was looking far at, but that's not the one you want to watch. Justin's wondering why he's wondering, running down the first one. Well, that's first something that they've, they that's just one of these things this team has done. They'll do it in, in inner squads and in practice. You strike out, you run to first. Wow. Now Parker Thurman at the plate. First pitch to Parker. Takes a strike on the outside corner. You can really tell there's a new level of discipline here. And uh, I think that's uh, that's something that 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 they're embracing. Players are embracing it, the team as a whole is embracing it, and I think that's a good thing for the Pirates. Now the 0-1 pitch. 
In for a strike. 0-2. Oh, well, one of the things I think Coach Groves trying to instill in them, you know, the idea is you go to the batter's box, you go from the batter's box to first base. Right. It's just what's supposed what's to happen. What's supposed to he be. wants them in that habit mm -hmm. no of matter doing what. it. No matter what happens, that's what you do. The 0 2 pitch, swing and a miss, and Parker goes down swinging, and he'll jog down to first base. And now that'll bring David Pickering to the plate now with two outs after two consecutive strikeouts. We had a double, a single, a single, and then strikeout, strikeout. Not what you want to see if you're the hitting coach. Now the first pitch to David Pickering. First off, Wright will turn around and run to Salvo back to the bag. Beautiful afternoon for baseball is turned to. Just a few wispy clouds up in the air. A lot of blue sky showing. Swing and a miss. Strike one. Still rather chilly outside, though. I don't think the temperature has ever got to where its target was supposed to be. I wonder what it was. I think I said 62. That one's foul back to the screen. 0-2 the count. On my computer it says 56 right now. Which is I said, a little low from what they were predicting we would see today. My phone is telling me 54. So on my side it's a little cooler than on your side, I guess. Well, you had your window open. That's right. That's what it is. <laughs> That's right. Now one, two count. Pitch, swing and a miss. Ball's in the dirt. They're going to throw it down to first and finish the out. And they'll strike out the side after giving up two runs on three hits to begin the game along with an error. We played one half inning. Pirates lead the Indians two to nothing. Back in a moment on the Pirate Media Network. Serving Mississippi since 1967, Mississippi Bonding Company is prepared to help in your time of need. Our agents are the quickest, most efficient, and most educated bail bonds agents in the area. We use state-of-the-art computer equipment and services to process all applications, credit cards, and deliver the necessary documents to get your friends and family released as quickly as possible. All jails, all courts, statewide and nationwide service, 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. In trouble? Call Mississippi Bonding Company right now and let our professional agents help. Pearl Stamp and Sign is now Signmark. Our name has changed, but not our great service. For over 20 years, we have been your number one hometown retailer in custom stamps, signage, and marketing products. Now we are growing and want to take you with us. Whether you have an event, starting a new business, or wish to expand your existing business, Signmark is committed to helping you meet your design and marketing needs. Come see the friendly staff at Signmark on Pearson Road in Pearl and make your mark in the business world. Welcome back to Pearl Pirates Baseball. We go to the bottom of the first. Pearl leading two to nothing defensively for the Pearl Pirates. That's Parker Thurman in left field. David Pickering in center. And uh, Zach Carter playing right field. Brandon DeSalvo, Grant Phillips, Alex Hutton, Matthew McGee from third to first. Austin McDonald behind the plate for the second game of a doubleheader, which is kind of unusual for a catcher these yes, days. Yes, it is. And on the mound, Jimmy Boyd getting the start. Desi Scott steps into the box, takes the first pitch for ball one. Batting order for Yazoo City has Desi Scott, Darius Wright, and Detravia Richardson. I think they call him Trey. There's a call strike. Boyd getting his second work of this season. Got a zero ERA. Came on and pitched the bottom of the seventh. Picked up the save. Getting the out, the side out for the Cougars of Northwest Rankin. Now got a one-two count to Desi Scott. Up and in for ball two, two and two the count. With such a short time in between games, it was almost like he just had an extended inning. Just misses outside, three balls, two strikes the count. Call strike three. That's the first out of the inning. That'll bring Darius Wright, the pitcher, to the plate. Now 
First pitch, hit softly into center field. Coming in and taking a bad hop away from Pickering. It being for a base hit by Darius Wright. That puts a runner at first base for the Indians in Darius Wright and brings up Trey Richardson, center fielder to the plate. And we're just underway. If you're just joining us, we're in game two of this season, game two of this day. Bunt down the third baseline, perfectly placed. Boyd's going to pump fake a throw, just trying to fool the runner at second because he had no play at first base. A perfectly executed bunt by Trey Richardson. Wright goes to second. And what I want to say is something real quick. What Jimmy Boyd just did was absolutely perfect. Exactly, yes. And it's something that we've seen an, an improvement from this team from years past. They would have picked it up, thrown it, may have gotten a decent throw, but okay, but also may have thrown it down to the bullpen right. and allowed a run to score or at least go to third. Jimmy picked it up. Somebody was hollering, no throw, no throw. And so Jimmy picks it up and just they, they, they've been taught pump fake. Pump fake it, yeah. M maybe a, absolutely. you know, maybe a – Base runner will get fooled in advance, and you can throw behind him and get him out. Right. But uh, he did exactly what he did. Don't make another mistake. Just a well-placed bunt. And that puts Sam Campbell at the plate with runners at first and second. Pops it up high into the air. Pickering battling the sun. Finds it. Gets there. Makes the catch. Great job by David Pickering to battle the sun. Parker Thurman was coming over to help him out if need be. But you can see it battling, fighting it, getting the glove up there to try to do it. Did a good job of staying with it, making the catch to record a tough out. Yeah, that's a tough out. Where the sun is in the sky right now, you don't think it's all that bright, but when the ball's in it, it's tough to find. Now brings brother Gabriel Campbell to the plate. Takes the first pitch for a ball one. And I mentioned that wispy clouds, that makes it even tougher. Yes. Because the ball sometimes get lost up there in that. Now the 1-0 pitch. Swing and a miss, strike one. One, one pitch, swing and a miss, strike two. Jimmy Boyd coming out, battling these Yazoo City Indian hitters to begin this game. Just missing outside for ball two. Two balls, two strikes to count. Now the 2-2 delivery. McDonald trying to see if he can get one called by the umpire, but a little bit low. Popped up, right side, and it's going to go out of play. Count remains full. Everybody will come back to their spots as everybody was off and running with two outs. Another foul to battle back and out of play. Count remains full. Just misses low for a ball four. Good battle at the plate. Eight pitches that Campbell drew from Jimmy Boyd, and he draws the walk, and that loads the bases for Andre Lloyd, the big first baseman. Tall right-hander. And now Jimmy Boyd's got a battle. He's got a two-to-nothing lead, but he's got bases loaded with two outs. Call strike right across the numbers on the inside half of the plate. Swing and foul tip. No balls, two strikes account. count. Boyd keeping the ball inside part of the plate. You don't let these big, tall guys with long arms <laughs> extend their hands. You're a lot better off. That's right. Now the 0-2 pitch. Foul back. Count remains. No balls, two strikes. Kind of interesting. Coach Grow doing the retrieving of baseballs instead of having a player do it back here. Coach Gross kind of 
hyper right now. I think he's, kind of, he's pumped up, excited about this day. The 0-2 pitch, inside corner. Nope, they said it. They said it caught his jersey. They're going to say it hit him. Coach Groves going to say, didn't he try to, wasn't he supposed to try to get out of the way or something? Which, that's, there's really no rules you have to get out. You can't lean in. Right. But uh, either way, he's going to get the credit for the on base in a pitch that didn't look that bad. They're gonna, he's going to question with this, the other umpire, though, and talk it over. They'll discuss. And they are going to give him the hit by pitch, and the run will score. And it's two to one ball game. Base is still loaded for Jeremiah Bryant, the designated hitter. First pitch misses high for a ball. One ball, no strikes to count. Foul back. One ball, one strike. First time of the first game was two hours, seven minutes. So pretty good pace on a game that goes the full seven innings. Had to play the bottom with a run scored and some hits going on there, walks. This game started at about 22 till, or about somewhere around 20 till, something like that, a little bit late from the original schedule start time. Swing and a miss, strike. And the ball and safe at the plate. The ball got away from the catcher and the run was coming. I was trying to figure out sure what was going on. That's what happened. Didn't go far away from Austin, but he kind of didn't hurry back to it. And on the play, the run's going to score from third. I didn't – the pitch wasn't down or anything. I think it's just going to be a pass ball against Austin's. what I would rule. Did it look like a wild pitch to you? No, it didn't look like a wild pitch to me. I think it was a pass ball. And Austin seems to have jammed his thumb or something. The way he's favoring that hand. Put his glove back on it now. Takes the glove off. Yeah. He, uh, he got that left thumb. I, I played yeah. catcher. I know exactly what that's like. He got that you, thumb. You, the b problem is, is how you catch ball. You get a pitch sometimes comes low in. Instead of having the glove right in front of you, turn it down this way. Right. And get that elbow up and out of the way. But doing that, you get that thumb. Ooh. And, and it'll it'll get you. And that's probably what happened. I spent half of my summers with a with a swollen thumb. From doing that. Swing and a miss. Strike three. Gets out of it. Two to two, though. The Indians battle back, get their two runs. We've played one. We're tied at two. Back in a moment on the Pirate Media Network. Harvey's Fish Hut is located on the corner of Airport Road and Old Whitfield Road in Pearl, Mississippi. Harvey's prides itself on having the best fried catfish in the metro area, as well as tasty pan trout. Harvey's Fish Hut only serves quality Mississippi farm-raised catfish. Dine-in or carry-out, Harvey's Fish Hut is always served hot and fresh, open Monday through Saturday for both lunch and dinner. So stop by and see Willie Harvey at Harvey's Fish Hut on the corner of Airport Road and Old Whitfield Road or call to place your order at 601-939-6262. 601-939-6262. It's easy to have concerns about your cooling and heating system in the middle of summer, especially when you live in the Deep South. My friends at Hermetic Rush Services recommend you let them take away these worries when you call Hermetic Rush Services at 601-932-7874 for all your residential and commercial cooling and heating needs. You'll feel smarter from the shoulders up and a whole lot more comfortable head to toe. Hermetic Rush Services, where Rush is our middle name. Call them today, 601-932-7874. Welcome back to Pearl Pirate Baseball. We're going to the top of the second yeah. inning. Game's tied at two. Each team has committed an error. Well, actually, it was a pass ball by Pearls. It's not counted, quote, as an error, but it's an unearned run. Two runs on three hits for the Pirates. Two runs on two hits. One error for the Indians. And leading off will be Austin McDonald here in the top of the second for Pearl. Leading off the catcher number four, Austin McDonald. First pitch to Austin. Misses outside for ball one. One ball, no strikes to count. Now you talk you talk about jamming that thumb back. Mm -hmm. Did it does it impact your hitting at all? Can. Uh, if it you know over mm -hmm. and over and the more pain to it, it definitely can because I'm unable to get a, a good, good grip, grip on, on the, the bat. bat. And the problem is that other hand, because that's that's your that's your bottom hand. Right. And 
the pressure on it sometimes can cause a little bit of issue, but usually that's not that bad. Ground ball to the left side, fielded by the shortstop Brown, throws it across a little high, but the first baseman Floyd is able to come down on the bag in time to record the out. 6-3 on the put out. Now to bring Matthew McGee to the plate. McGee, our offensive player of the game in game one today with a double and a sack bunt. One for two in the game, hitting 500 on the season. Takes that one on the outside corner for a call strike. McGee filling the shoes of Kirby Wixon, who graduated and moved on, that played first base last year for the Pirates. Breaking ball in for strike two, and those are some big. Big shoes. Big shoes. Big boy. I assume he's got big. I never looked at his feet. I, I don't know about his feet, but, but. Big boy. Big boy. That's right. Ground ball right side. It's going to be fielded by Lloyd. He says, I got it. Steps up a couple of steps, touches the bag to record the out. Two outs here in the top of the second for Alex Hutton. Alex had some, made some great contact, had some good hits first game. Big double down the third baseline. Hitting 500 on the season. First pitch to Alex in for a call strike. Alex also had a sack button that first game. Lined foul into the dugout on the third base side. Count goes to 0-2. Alex crowds the front of the, dug the batter's box, right up close to the plate, all over the top of it. Catcher set up outside. Pitch is going to come outside, but farther out than it needed to. One ball, two strikes to count. It's almost like he set his target <laughs> in the uh, left-handed batter's box. He, he Right on the outside corner, breaking ball stays down and in a little bit. Count goes 2-2 two -two to Alex Hutton. Top of the order on deck, Grant Phillips. Alex could reach base with two outs. Now the 2-2 pitch, low and away, ball three. Again, our next schedule on Pirate Media Network is Monday night, scheduled to do a softball game. Now 3-2 pitch, grounded left side, past the third baseman diving. Shortstop comes up with it, throws it, and got him. Good play by the shortstop. The third baseman made the diving effort, wasn't able to get there. Shortstop from deep in the hole just gets Alex at first base, and that ends the inning. Pirates go one, two, three in the top of the second. We played one and a half. Scores tied at two. Back in a moment on the Pirate Media Network. In times of joy, in moments of grief, we are there. When the world looks for truth, broadcasters come through, even when all else fails. Today, with more ways than ever to experience the moments that transform our lives, Americans still choose broadcast television and radio more than all other media combined. Television and radio are still the most trusted sources for news and entertainment. And our web and social sites are among the most visited sites in our daily lives. When important moments happen, both big and small, we're the first informers to history. We are the pioneers, the innovators, the local broadcasters of radio and television. Reaching more people, touching more lives. Welcome back to Pearl Pirate Baseball. We're going to the bottom of the second inning. Pearl and Yazoo City tied at two. Ralph Jones leading off for the Indians and hits it to the shortstop. Grant Phillips comes in hard on it, picks it up. He's going to throw it in the dirt, and McGee can't make the scoop to get the out. That's going to be an error on the shortstop. Grant Phillips had time to make the play and just rushed it too much and kind of threw it down into the dirt a little bit. So that'll be a throwing error on the shortstop. That'll bring Jeremiah Durr to the plate. We get the feeling, DP, they were amped up and ready to go for Northwest Rankin. You know, it's a, it's a rival game for them. Playing against those guys, and you kind of come in a little more uh, focused possibly. 
you have the big win, and, and now it's kind of a little bit of a letdown possibly, and uh, they're making a few more mental mistakes here in this contest. We'll see how long Coach Grohl lets that go before we see him uh, really kind of settle in a little bit better than that. Jeremiah Durr, the shortstop at the plate. Takes that pitch outside for a ball two. And last year we very seldom saw a catcher go both ends of a doubleheader. But we're seeing that here today with Austin McDonald. Do you know who the uh, number two catcher might be? Uh, we've seen a couple of guys. Where Zach Prince is supposed to be a catcher once we get things going. And another one, uh, I think it's uh, Cody White has been, been catching a lot and say, should see Cody catch some this year. Coach Groh goes to the mound to talk things over with Jimmy Boyd. Probably might say, hey, look, put, put it in play. Give, you know, throw strikes. Let your defense do the work behind you. Don't want to start giving things up at this point in the ballgame. That pitch, I didn't, wasn't looking, I was looking down. Did that hit him? Yeah, they say it hit him. So another hit by pitch. And now Coach Grove going back out, and I think that's going to mean a pitching change. There's nobody been getting loose. Let's see where he's going. He's going to bring Alex Hutton into the game to pitch. So with that, we're going to take a break. We'll step away and be back in a moment. You're watching Pearl Pirate Baseball on the Pirate Media Network. Serving Mississippi since 1967, Mississippi Bonding Company is prepared to help in your time of need. Our agents are the quickest, most efficient, and most educated bail bonds agents in the area. We use state-of-the-art computer equipment and services to process all applications, credit cards, and deliver the necessary documents to get your friends and family released as quickly as possible. All jails, all courts, statewide and nationwide service, 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. In trouble? Call Mississippi Bonding Company right now and let our professional agents help. Harvey's Fish Hut is located on the corner of Airport Road and Old Whitfield Road in Pearl, Mississippi. Harvey's prides itself on having the best fried catfish in the metro area, as well as tasty pan trout. Harvey's Fish Hut only serves quality Mississippi farm-raised catfish. Dine-in or carry-out, Harvey's Fish Hut is always served hot and fresh, open Monday through Saturday for both lunch and dinner. So stop by and see Willie Harvey at Harvey's Fish Hut on the corner of Airport Road and Old Whitfield Road, or call to place your order at 601-939-6262, 601-939-6262. Welcome back to Pearl Pirate Baseball here on the Pirate Media Network. Keep them separated. Making a change of the Pirates. Now Alex Hutton comes to the mound. Jimmy Boyd goes to second base. So they just swap positions. Alex will be the new pitcher. Jimmy closed out the first game here this afternoon against Northwest Rankin, picked up the save. A struggle a little bit finding the strike zone here. He's thrown 34 pitches, 18 strikes, 16 balls, but hit two batters. Got one strikeout, one walk. Giving up two runs, one earned, two hits. Right now he's got runners at first and second. One reached on an error by the shortstop, Grant Phillips. The other a hit batter. Number one. So Coach Grove decides that's Number enough. Let's go ahead and go to the pen. See somebody else. So right, puts Alex up. shot. <clears throat> so now Alex will face Desi Scott, the left fielder. Alex, a sidearm delivery. Pitch misses for ball one. Must have been just a little bit low. It looked like to be a pretty good pitch, but maybe a little low. That sidearm delivery, he's going to need that low strike to be effective. You don't want to get that pitch coming up. Now the 1-0 pitch. Misses low for ball two. Two balls, no strikes to count. Can tell Coach Groves' body language. He's looking at the umpire like, come on up, where is that? you got to give me that low strike. Now the 2-0 pitch. Bunts it first base side. McGee's going to pick it up. He's going to throw the first to Jimmy Boyd to record the out. It'll be a sack bunt. Good play by Jimmy Boyd and 
Matthew McGee to make the play and get the out, but both runners will move up. Now you've got runners at second and third with one out. Darius Wright, the pitcher, singled his last at bat, steps into the batter's box. Yazoo City trying to take their first lead of this 2013 season. Ground ball left side. Phillips is going to pick it up. Only play is to first and throws it high, but McGee comes down with it, makes the tag. Good play by Matthew McGee to record the out. A run scores. Durr advances to third. Pirates get the second out. That's what you want to do at this point in the ball game. He might, you look, say, well, Mike could have had a play getting that runner going to third, but you had to make a tag on him. You had to get it there. It's just one of those kinds you better get to sure out at this point in the ball game. And heads up play there by McGee. He had to go up and get it a little high on the throw. Came back down and made the tag on the runner as he was going down the line. Good play there by McGee. And now Trey Richardson at the plate, center fielder. Singled his last at bat. Ground ball left side. DeSalvo picks it up. Throws it. A little high for McGee. McGee's in the baseline and is going to tag him and say he's out. The runner and McGee collided. The runner rounded the base. McGee reaches down to tag him. Now the question is, did he score the run? And Coach Gross saying he did not. I'm waiting to see a signal from the umpire. There's talk at first base about whether there was some kind of interference on the play there. And since he, did, well, since he didn't get the force at first, he had to tag him. Depends on which one crossed the plate before the tag or the run. I don't know what he got first. I hadn't seen a signal by the umpire, so I don't know. We may have to get him to ask. Home plate umpire is talking to Coach Grow and he said the run did not count. Thank you. So that's what we want to find out. Back in a moment, score still tied. Or so Yazoo City leading three to two. Back in a moment on the Pirate Media Network. It's easy to have concerns about your cooling and heating system in the middle of summer, especially when you live in the Deep South. My friends at Hermetic Rush Services recommend you let them take away these worries when you call Hermetic Rush Services at 601-932-7874 for all your residential and commercial cooling and heating needs. You'll feel smarter from the shoulders up and a whole lot more comfortable head to toe. Hermetic Rush Services, where Rush is our middle name. Call them today, 601-932-7874. Baseball on the Pirates Media Network. We're going to the top of the third inning. Pearl trailing Yazoo City by a score of three to two. The Yazoo City coach was still appealing that run at the plate, but to no avail. Grant Phillips in the batter's box. That pitch misses outside for a ball. One ball, no strikes to count. Fouls that one back screen. The question, of course, was on the run. If they gotten the force out. If the throw had been on target, they got the force out at first base. There'd been no question. Run doesn't count anyway. It doesn't matter. It's a force out there at the bag. But because of the high throw and the runner rounding the bag and they ended up getting him out on the tag because he had gone off the bag, then that's where if he had gotten across the plate first, the run would have counted. But in the opinion of the home plate umpire, he did not. So therefore, the run did not count. Two balls, two strikes to Grant Phillips. Doubled his first at bat right down the third baseline. Scored the first run of the ball game. Takes that one low for ball three. Three balls. The umpire held up 3-0, but I think it's 3-2. 3-2 <laughs> is what this I think he was doing three balls in full count. <laughs> <laughs> A full count for those watching. Just hold your fist up. Just That's full it. count. Up and in <clears throat> for a ball four. But he held up three balls in one hand and full count in the other hand. So it's all right. He got it right when it was all said and done. And Zach Carter steps in, singled his first at bat. Low and away to Zach. Pitch misses low, ball two. Two balls, no strikes to count. Zach hitting 250 on the seasons. One for one in this ball game. Oh. 
That one's in for a call strike. Two balls, one strike. Now the 2-1 delivery showing bunt. Reaches for it. Can't get contact with it. So it'll be strike two. Two and two to count. Chopper left side. Pitcher's going to pick it up. Tough throw. And he's going to get it in time to get the out. The runner will advance. It's one of those that had he been bunting, he would have gotten a, a sack bunt. But since he was swinging, it's just going to be a 1-3 put out with the runner advancing. That will bring Brandon DeSalvo to the plate. Singled his first at bat. That one bounces in the dirt, gets away from the catcher. Runner's going to head to third and get there safely. On the wild pitch, Grant Phillips goes down to third base. 1-0 the count. Yeah, looking at the forecast, tomorrow's supposed to be a beautiful day, mid-60s, but Monday, 70% chance of more of those thunder boomers around. DeSalvo reaches out for one, grounds it towards the shortstop. going to run it. Shortstop can't pick it up. And the salvo is going to get to first base. Don't know if he picks it up. He had a chance anyway, as slow as it rolled him staying back on it. Yeah, the way he stayed back on that ball, I really don't think he could have thrown Brandon out at first. But bobbled it, picking it up. So I think we got to charge an error against the Indians. Run scores on the play. Ties it back up at three. Two balls, no strikes to count. Zach Prince in the batter's box, designated hitter. Takes that one outside for ball three. Right, struggling to find the strike zone here against Prince. Finds it there. Gets that one right on the outside corner. Again, we're supposed to have a softball game Monday night, but if that that uh, forecast comes true, I doubt we'll play that. Strike two on Zach Prince. Either got him on the check swing or caught the outside part of the plate, one or the other. And the Mid-Mississippi Classic coming up and looks like beautiful weather for Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. That was ball four. DeSalvo was going on the pitch. He didn't realize it was ball four and dove in and got his uniform dirty. Parker Thurman comes to the batter's box. Left fielder, 0 for 1 today, struck out swinging his last at bat. First pitch misses low and away for ball one. 1-0 one the count. Coach Grove calls Parker down to talk to him. The catcher goes out and talks to his pitcher. The Mid-Mississippi Classic has teams coming in from all over Alabama and Mississippi and playing games at Pearl and Brandon and Northwest Rankin and I think also at Madison Central some this year. I don't remember how many. I didn't count how many teams there are, but there are quite a few. Pitch misses high for ball two. And those games are Thursday, Friday, Saturday of next week, right? Thursday, Friday, Saturday. They used to start them a number of years ago. They had to actually play some on Tuesday. And then they just went to the weekend, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Throw back to second. And gets away from the south, away from the center field, the second baseman. Center field is going to come in and pick it up. D is going to stay there. This is for ball three. Now the 3-0 pitch. 
Outside, ball four. Parker Thurman draws the walk, and that loads the bases for David Pickering. And Coach Grow is going to talk to the umpire. We're going to get a pinch hitter, River Weghorst. Left-handed hitter is going to come up and pinch hit for David Pitching. Pickering. Number 15, River Weghorst. Bunch of games with a bunch of teams take part in that Mid Mississippi Classic next weekend. Weghorst well, was in and ready to go, and the umpire really was still writing something down. Said, "Hang on a second, So they back out. Now Weghorst ready to go. Left-handed hitter shows bunt, pulls back. Takes a call strike. The schedule at Pearl next week on Thursday. We'll give it to you in a moment. Swing and a miss at strike, strike two. Clinton will play UMS right at 4.30. Then Pearl will play UMS right at 7. Those are two games at Pearl next Thursday. There will also be games at Northwest Rankin and Brandon on Thursday. Call strike three to River Weghorst. He comes into the game as a pinch hitter. And you know, Justin, when you come into the game as a pinch hitter. You don't want to strike out. Not looking especially. Not looking. Not at that's, all. And that's going to put Austin McDonald in the batter's box with two outs now here in the top of the third of a tie game, three to three. Then on Friday, they'll also add some games at Madison Central as well as the games at Pearl and Northwest Rankin and Brandon. That was a call strike. I think wasn't that a strike or we call that a ball? We call that a ball. Doing two things at once, sometimes multitasking doesn't work as good. That one's a strike. That's a strike. And, and with the way the sun is right now, looking at the scoreboard is a, is a tough task for me to read what the numbers are because the sun kind of got them faded out a little bit. 1-1 one, one pitch, grounded straight back up the middle. The shortstop's going to pick it up, touch second base to get the force out, and that'll end the inning. And the Pirates will strand the base runners. They do score one and tie the game at three. After two and a half, it's tied at three. Back in a moment on the Pirate Media Network. Pearl Stamp and Sign is now Sign Mart. Our name has changed, but not our great service. For over 20 years, we have been your number one hometown retailer in custom stamps, signage, and marketing products. Now we are growing and want to take you with us. Whether you have an event, starting a new business, or wish to expand your existing business, SignMart is committed to helping you meet your design and marketing needs. Come see the friendly staff at SignMart on Pearson Road in Pearl and make your mark in the business world. Harvey's Fish Hut is located on the corner of Airport Road and Old Whitfield Road in Pearl, Mississippi. Harvey's prides itself on having the best fried catfish in the metro area, as well as tasty pan trout. Harvey's Fish Hut only serves quality Mississippi farm-raised catfish. Dine-in or carry-out, Harvey's Fish Hut is always served hot and fresh, open Monday through Saturday for both lunch and dinner. So stop by and see Willie Harvey at Harvey's Fish Hut on the corner of Airport Road and Old Whitfield Road, or call to place your order at 601-939-6262. 601-939-6262. Welcome back to Pearl Pirate Baseball. Got a look. I didn't notice who went back out to center field for Pearl. That doesn't look like that's not Pickering back out there. So let me make sure who went to center field. River Weghor stays in the game playing center field. Came in to pinch hit and remains in the game as the center fielder for the Pirates. First pitch to Sam Campbell in for a call strike. No balls, one strike to count. Hit into the air to left center field. Parker Thurman moving over. He's going to get there and make the catch. I did ask Parker, Justin, uh, between the games. I mean, in the interview I had with him, I don't think you got a chance to hear that, but I had an interview with him that we played in the pregame today about his effort, about him always going and diving for balls. And like, he's always done that. Why he didn't dive for that ball over here that I thought he was going to be able to get to? He said, you know, I should have. 
<laughs> and I thought about it, but I didn't, and I don't know why I didn't. He said he wouldn't let that happen again. But, and, and talking to Coach Lyle, too, though, he, was, he wasn't disappointed that he didn't because he kept it in front of him. He didn't let anybody else advance. It's one right. of the smarter plays. There's a line drive tailing away, and River Weghorst falls down. That ball had a big tail on it. Started off to the left field side of second base, tailed all the way back into right center field. That's going to be a double for, Ga for Gabriel Campbell on a hard-hit line drive with a pretty good tail to it. Pretty good uh, in indeed. That, that, that was hard to play, hard to judge, and falling down didn't help. Well, because where River was playing when it first left his bat, he would have had to go a little bit towards the left side to his right. right. And, and But then as the tail caught it, he tried to sh shift his position and That's literally and fell down. <laughs> and as it turns out, it's a double for the Indians. That pitch by Hutton hits him on the left side. Pirates helping them out too much with the pitching now by hitting batters. That's the third hit batter of the ball game. Two by Boyd, one now by Hutton. And that one just bounces away from McDonald's catcher's mitt. Wasn't that bad of a pitch. It was a ball on the outside off the plate. But that's just a pass ball on McDonald, not staying with it, making the catch. Those are the kind of things that will cause a coach to pull his hair out. Of course, mm -hmm. Coach Groh doesn't have any. <laughs> He's completely shaved bald. There's a strike on the outside corner. It's the little things like that that can be so frustrating. Alex Hutton throws over behind the runner at third. Of course, there are some that would kind of like Coach Grove's haircut. Right. You know, for instance, our director in the booth Boy. has a similar haircut to Coach Grove. Right. Fly ball right side. Zach Carter is going to get it, catch it. Runner from third is going to tag. Here comes the throw. They're going to let it go. And here again, that's slow grass. You cannot let a ball hit the ground in that slow grass. Yeah, you've got to pick it up and turn around and point. make the throw because the, the way how thick this turf is, and with it being as wet as it's been, it just dies once it hits. And you've got to pick the ball up, turn around, and make the cutoff, make the throw. If not, there's no hope of getting anybody out of the plate. And that's on the catcher. The catcher's got to – he calls cut or let it go. And, and he's just got to know that it doesn't matter that it's online. It doesn't matter that it's, if it's going to bounce more than once, you got to, you got to, you got to cut it. Right. Because it's going to kill it when it hits that grass, take everything off. The 0 1 pitch, fouled right side, out of play, 0 2. Of course, in the defense of the catcher, you're taught as a catcher, if it's online mm -hmm. and not going to bounce more than a couple of three times at the most, let it come on because right. it's, that's still quicker than a cut and throw. And the key is it being online. And so it, it's hard to shift from that, especially for a young catcher, not a tremendous amount of experience, right. to, to change from that mindset. The ball was on line. It was a good throw. Uh, and under dry conditions, it's a chance to make a play, and he made the right decision. But it's just as wet as it is, it's hard to be able to play that. One ball, two strikes. Indians now with a 4-3 lead after that sack fly. Chop foul down the third baseline. Count remains one ball, two strikes. But anyway, on Friday then at uh, Pearl High School, games begin at noon. Brookhaven will play Walker at 12 o'clock, Walker of Alabama. Breaking ball misses outside, ball two. Then at 2.30, it'll be McComb versus Walker of Alabama. And at 5 o'clock, Lawrence County versus Central Private. Then at 7.30, Pearl will take on Vicksburg. That's the Friday schedule at Pearl High School. Foul back, count remains 2-2. Then on Saturday, day begins at 10 a.m. Davidson plays Vicksburg, and then Davidson plays their second game. It'll be against South Haven at 12.30. Then Pearl will play Walker at 3, and then South Haven will play Clinton at 5.30. Grounded to the left side. It's going to be a tough play. DeSalvo comes in, picks it up, throws it, and McGee makes a scoop, but too late, and that's going to be a base hit. Run scores. And that'll bring Jeremiah Durr to the plate with the Indians leading 5-3. So ten Durr. games over three days at Pearl High School.
popped up straight back here just over our head. No balls, one strike to count. That ball's hit pretty well, left center field. Weghorst drifts over, gets there and makes the catch and records the out, and that's the final out. But not before the Indians score two runs on two hits, no errors, one left. We've played three complete. Pearl Trails 5-3 back in a moment on the Pirate Media Network. In times of joy, in moments of grief, we are there. When the world looks for truth, broadcasters come through, even when all else fails. Today, with more ways than ever to experience the moments that transform our lives, Americans still choose broadcast television and radio more than all other media combined. Television and radio are still the most trusted sources for news and entertainment. And our web and social sites are among the most visited sites in our daily lives. When important moments happen, both big and small, we're the first informers to history. We are the pioneers, the innovators, the local broadcasters of radio and television. Reaching more people, touching more lives. Welcome back to Pearl Pirate Baseball. We go to the top of the fourth inning with Pearl trailing Yazoo City by a score of 5-3 for the Pirates. Three runs on three hits and one error. For the Indians, five runs on four hits. They've committed two errors. For Pearl, Matthew McGee, Alex Hutton, Grant Phillips, the three scheduled hitters coming up. One of those should reach. It'd be Zach Carter, fourth batter. First pitch to McGee, fouls back. In for a strike. No balls, two strikes to count. I just need to get a couple men on base. Move them around. Strike three to Matthew McGee. That'll bring Alex Hutton, the pitcher, to the plate. Alex grounded out to the shortstop his first at bat. Going to have a new member to the PMN crew yes. part-time this baseball season. That Justin won't be able to do all of the games. In fact, I'm going to miss three. That's right. Myself this year because of my Braves commitments. But Justin will do, uh, I think, what was it, 12 that you're doing? A little over 12, 13, 14, something like that? I think something like that, yeah, I think 14. And uh, Jay Fletcher is going to join us for three or four games. There's a ball, one ball, two strikes to count. And uh, hopefully Bryant May, we've still got to make contact with him first of the week, try to get him to fill in on those that – Jay won't be there, and Justin won't be there. And then they said he did not go, checked his swing, so it'll be ball two, two and two to count to Alex Hutton. And I think there's one game that the two of them would do together, one game that neither of, neither of us will be there. That is, that, is that is correct. Fouls that one off. Count remains 2-2. Two, two. Also want to give a shout-out to a member of our football crew yes. and game day hostess. Most everybody should know by now that this is this, but is with child, is Kristen. Saw her the other night at the Pearl Chamber Banquet. High fly ball, right side. Second baseman Durr's getting there, but Lloyd, the first baseman, is going to call him off and make the catch and record the out. And that will be the second out of the inning, and that will be Grant Phillips, top of the order of the plate. Grant's one for one, a double and a walk, scored twice. Catches the inside corner for a call strike. But Kristen's due sometime in 
August, but has assured us that she will be ready to go for football season. <laughs> Grounded softly left side. First pitcher picks it up, throws it. Can't get the out. Phillips is going to round first, heading for second, and is going to be there easily standing up. That'll be an error. I think it's going to be a single and an error. I think he's going to have the base anyway, so I'm going to give him a single. And then we'll charge the error for his going down to second base. It'll be a throwing error by the pitcher picked that up. So I'm going to give him the hit and then the, then the error. I think he was going to have the base regardless. Zach Carter to plate. First pitch of the ball, one ball, no strikes to count. Swings and misses, strike one, one and one to count. Low and in the dirt, pops over the head of the catcher, but Grant Phillips takes off and goes down. One of the things that too, I've noticed Coach Grow really teaching these guys when you're on second base you're reading that pitch and if the ball's going to hit the dirt if it's a breaking ball and it's going to hit the dirt go 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 the catcher if the catcher's able to block it up catch it and throw you out so be it right but if it's a breaking ball and it's going to be down in the dirt go yeah because he wants to take a chance he was trying to get that runner over at third base that one misses high for ball three three and one to count two outs here in the top of the fourth zach carter trying to bring in a run Brandon DeSalvo in the on deck circle. Popped up right side. It's going to get out of play over the first base dugout, land on the roof of the equipment building. That'll take the count full, three balls, two strikes. Zach Carter singled back in the first inning and scored. Grounded out back to the pitcher in the third. Base hit here will score a run. Grounds it right side past the pitcher. Second baseman dives, knocks it down, but no play. And that will allow the run to score on the single by Zach Carter. Phillips crosses home plate easily, and it's 5-4 with Brandon DeSalvo coming to the plate. Singled in the first inning, reached on an error in the third the inning. Brandon DeSalvo. Brandon's got his family down here by the first base dugout watching. Mom, dad, both sisters. Carter goes on the pitch and is going to get in safe with a stolen pace. Pitch was high for a ball. Carter was going on the pitch. The throw was high down. First stolen base of the season for the Pirates. I really like the aggressive base running the Pirates have shown today. Well, that gets that runner in scoring position. Now if Absolutely. DeSalle can get a base hit, then you can score that run. So otherwise you leave him, you know, gets a base hit and you got him at third and you got to get another hit. So heads up job there. Good job by Coach Grow and good job by Zach to make it happen. Popped up, foul, out of play. Count goes two balls, one strike. Brandon reached a little bit for that pitch, a little bit off the plate. I noticed the earlier one that he – Got on base with the error, same thing. He reached a little bit for one that was a little bit off the plate, I thought. Made contact. But that pitch misses low for a ball. Three balls, one strike to count. But unless you're behind in the count, two strike count on you, you want to let those close ones out there, let them go and wait on one you can turn on. That one jammed him a little bit, but he fights it off. Three balls, two strikes, two outs. Runner down at second base. Pirates trail by one in the top of the fourth inning. Well hit ball, left center field. Center fielder going back, left fielder going back. Nobody's going to get there. Run scoring double by Brandon DeSalvo on a well hit ball to left center field. 
He hit, he hit the ball into the gap. You thought it would hit and roll to the wall, but it doesn't. It just hits and stays there. It just hits and dies. The, uh, both players over pursued, had to come back, but a great job of hitting there by Brandon DeSalvo. Picks up the double and the RBI. Well, it's just like we talk about on the throw coming to the plate that you don't cut and you let it bounce. It's not going to go anywhere. It's going to stop when it hits this grass. And I said, Brandon, oh, almost got picked off, but it goes into center field on the throw behind him at second base. But th that's the exact same thing, though, but it, normal conditions. We get to do that in April, hits a ball like that, and it oh, goes yeah. to the wall. Probably one hops to the wall. Uh, but wet as it is right now, it just hits and plugs. But a good job of hitting by Brandon DeSalvo. Pitch misses outside for ball. Brandon picked up his third RBI of this ball game. And third of the season, team high third RBI, leads the team. That one's foul back, which is what you want that number three hitter to do. Absolutely. And most of the time you see That's either right. that three or four hitters, you're leading RBI guy. That's right. Good looking pitch on the outside part of the plate that Zach kind of looked at. One ball, two strikes. Zach struck out looking in the first. Walked in the third. Takes that one down in the dirt. 2-2 two, two the count. Now the 2-2 two, two pitch. Fouled off over top of the first base dugout and out of play. Count remains 2-2. Two, two. Umpire on the base is having to shade his eyes from the sun. It's out now. It, uh, it's not hiding behind any clouds. It is a bright, sunny afternoon now here at Ridgeland High School. Call strike three for the second time in this game. Zach Prince goes down looking. And that will end the inning. But the Pirates will score two runs and tie the game at five after three and a half. Back in a moment on the Pirate Media Network. Serving Mississippi since 1967, Mississippi Bonding Company is prepared to help in your time of need. Our agents are the quickest, most efficient, and most educated bail bonds agents in the area. We use state-of-the-art computer equipment and services to process all applications, credit cards, and deliver the necessary documents to get your friends and family released as quickly as possible. All jails, all courts, statewide and nationwide service, 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. In trouble? Call Mississippi Bonding Company right now and let our professional agents help. Harvey's Fish Hut is located on the corner of Airport Road and Old Whitfield Road in Pearl, Mississippi. Harvey's prides itself on having the best fried catfish in the metro area, as well as tasty pan trout. Harvey's Fish Hut only serves quality Mississippi farm-raised catfish. Dine-in or carry-out, Harvey's Fish Hut is always served hot and fresh, open Monday through Saturday for both lunch and dinner. So stop by and see Willie Harvey at Harvey's Fish Hut on the corner of Airport Road and Old Whitfield Road, or call to place your order at 601-939-6262. 601-939-6262. Welcome back to Pearl Pirate Baseball. We go to the bottom of the fourth inning with Pearl and Yazoo City tied at five. First pitch to Desi Scott, swinging strike. Scott struck out and had a sack bunt in the game. Fouls that one off. No balls, two strikes to count. Alex Hutton on the mound. Came on relief of Jimmy Boyd. Boyd started the game, went one inning, gave up two hits, three runs. One of those was earned. He walked one and struck out two, hit two batters. Then Alex came on, has gone two innings since then. He's given up two hits, two runs, both earned. He's hit one batter since he came in. Swing and a miss, strike three. Good looking breaking ball. I'm not sure why we didn't throw it around. <laughs> Normally after a strikeout like that, you'll see the catcher jump up and sling it down to third or the first to throw the ball around. Ground ball chopper. Brandon DeSalvo picks it up. Plants throws a strike this time to Matthew McGee and gets the out as Darius Wright grounds out. 
That'll bring Trey Richardson to the plate, center fielder, singled and grounded out to third. Now he bats with nobody on two out here in the bottom of the fourth inning. Low and away for a ball. One ball, no strikes account. Alex doing a great job at changing the position where he's putting the baseball, but also at varying his speeds up too. It's keeping these batters off balance. Now the 1-0 pitch. Sharply down the third baseline, but just foul, says the home plate umpire. Hard hit ball, but just wide of the bag. Yazoo City coach not necessarily agreeing with that, but you don't expect him to. Breaking ball misses outside for ball two. Two balls, one strike to count to Trey Richardson. Ground ball to the shortstop. Grant Phillips picks it up. Plants, throws, too high and wide. And that's going to be an error on the shortstop. Ball hits straight to you. You got to make that play and get the out. He struggled on a couple of throws today. This afternoon he can't. It's like he uh, he comes set and then throws too high as opposed to just making it one motion as he catches fields and throws like you want him to do. That'll bring Sam Campbell to plate, 0 for 2, flat out to center and flat out to left so far in the ball game. Now he bats with a runner at first, two outs here in the bottom of the fourth, throw over to first, the quick throw. And that's one I like to see a pitcher do more of. Before you get on the rubber, before you get set, just make that quick throw and that runner's getting that bouncing lead, catch him off guard. He's taking off, pitches outside, and no throw is Austin McDonald didn't believe he had a chance to get him, so he didn't even throw it. Stolen base for Richardson. He faked going to third, pitches low for ball two, two and over the count. Now the 2-0 pitch from Alex Hutton. Swing and a miss. Strike one, two balls, one strike to count. DP, I've seen all kinds of things on, you know, those uh, warm up, swing a bat, but I've never seen a sledgehammer until today. Interesting. I just noticed that myself when you pointed that out. Fly ball, hit the center field. Weghorst moving over and gets there to make the play and records the third and final out. No runs on no hits, one error, one man left on base. We've played four complete, and the Pirates and the Indians tied at five. Back in a moment on the Pirate Media Network. It's easy to have concerns about your cooling and heating system in the middle of summer, especially when you live in the Deep South. My friends at Hermetic Rush Services recommend you let them take away these worries when you call Hermetic Rush Services at 601-932-7874 for all your residential and commercial cooling and heating needs. You'll feel smarter from the shoulders up and a whole lot more comfortable head to toe. Hermetic Rush Services, where Rush is our middle name. Call them today, 601-932-7874. Pearl Stamp and Sign is now Sign Mart. Our name has changed, but not our great service. For over 20 years, we have been your number one hometown retailer in custom stamps, signage, and marketing products. Now we are growing and want to take you with us. Whether you have an event, starting a new business, or wish to expand your existing business, Sign Mart is committed to helping you meet your design and marketing needs. Come see the friendly staff at Sign Mart on Pearson Road in Pearl and make your mark in the business world. Welcome back to Pearl Pirate Baseball. We go to the top of the fifth. Pearl and Yazoo City tied at five. Just in a game that we just come off a game against Northwest Rankin. We win the game four to three. We talked about how solid defensively the Pirates played. Not so this game. 
No, not so this game, not at all. You can tell this team's coming out. They're not focused. Uh, they're not playing as disciplined. They're, 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 just, they're just not clicking like they were in game one. I don't know if, they're, if it's that they're tired or if just that the focus level has dropped and after the big win. I know Northwest Rankin, you know, that's a rivalry game. You come in, you're geared up, you're keyed up, you're ready to go. But here against Yazoo City, the Pirates really struggling to, to play that complete game, to be as focused and to play as disciplined as they played in game one. Well, and you think about it, because even when you see a pile on celebration after the first game of the season, uh, right. which is huge, just beating a great team in Northwest Rankin, but, yeah, is that a letdown? Is it hard to come back up and play then immediately following that against a team like Yazoo City? It, it Obviously like didn't it get is. up far. Yeah. Parker Thurman takes a call strike. That pitch misses inside for ball one. Parker struck out and walked so far in the game. 0 for 1. Call strike on the inside corner. One ball, two strikes to count. Ground ball straight back up through the middle. The shortstop's going to get there and pick it up. Throw to first, not in time. Infield single for Parker Thurman. And the Pirates get the leadoff batter on base, and that'll bring River Weghorst to the plate. Came in as a pinch hitter for David Pickering a little bit ago, a couple innings ago. Struck out at that at bat. Then goes into center field, makes a couple of pretty good plays. Bunt sat perfectly down the third baseline. Catcher can't pick it up. That's going to be a base hit. <laughs> Perfect execution. And that is exactly, that's how you teach it. That's how you want it to be. That's a perfect bunt. You keep it on the grass so that way it doesn't roll foul because if that ball moves four or five inches to the left, it gets off the edge of the grass and it's going to roll foul past the chalk line. Right. But staying on the grass, it stays level. It just sits there. Weghorst with good speed anyway. The catcher reaches down to pick it up knowing he's got to hurry and he can't come up with it clean. And Good job by River. Now Austin McDonald at the plate. First baseman's looking for another bunt. Won't get it. It's going to be a pop-up right center field. Parker's going to set up and like he's going to tag. Center fielder's going to make the catch. Parker's going. Here comes the throw. It's going to be offline. Throw down to second. He's going to be safe, too. Both runners will advance. So it's a fly out to center field. Parker tags and goes on the play, and then on the throw, River Weghorst also goes down to second base. Heads up, base running, and that's what we talked about, that aggressive base running. It's one thing for Parker to tag. It wasn't that deep, but he had to have the perfect throw to get him. But then River alertly sees the ball go through and heads down to second. And that puts Yazoo City with the left side of the infield in. First baseman in, second baseman's the only one back for Matthew McGee. Takes the pitch up and in for ball one. Runner at third, runner at second. One out, top of the fifth inning. Swing and a miss, strike one, one and one to count. I said third baseman in, shortstop in on the grass, first baseman even with the bag. So if it goes to the left side of the infield, they're going to try to cut a run off at the plate. Two balls, one strike to count. McGee hitless in this game. He's grounded to first and struck out. High fly ball, left field. Parker Thurman's going to tag at third. Coming in as a left fielder, makes the catch. Going to be a throw. It's going to be offline. River Weghorst heads for third. The sack fly scores the run. And the base running by the Pirates has paid off. And Weghorst goes to third on the play. And the Pirates take a 6-5 lead here in the top of the fifth with two outs. That's great. Great baseball right there from the Pirates. Good base running. You get the sacrifice fly to bring the run home. It's exactly what you want to do. That's what they've been working on all offseason. Alex Hutton at the mound. Bunts it foul down the first baseline. And Alex with two outs. He was trying to bunt for a base hit. Figured if he could catch him asleep, he might be able to beat one out. But he goes foul, so ready to go again. Alex called timeout. Home plate umpire granted it just prior to the pitcher going into his motion. Just prior to the pitch. Now 
Now they're ready to go again. Low and in the dirt. Good job by the catcher, Campbell, to block that one to keep it in front of him. Keep River Workhorse down at third base. Good pitch outside part of the plate. One ball, two strikes to count. Now the one-two delivery is grounded to the right side. Pass the pitcher. Second baseman is going to pick it up, throw it in time to get the out, and that will end the inning, but not before the Pirates score one run and break the tie after four and a half. Pearl leads 6-5. Back in a moment on the Pirate Media Network. Serving Mississippi since 1967, Mississippi Bonding Company is prepared to help in your time of need. Our agents are the quickest, most efficient, and most educated bail bonds agents in the area. We use state-of-the-art computer equipment and services to process all applications, credit cards, and deliver the necessary documents to get your friends and family released as quickly as possible. All jails, all courts, statewide and nationwide service, 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. In trouble? Call Mississippi Bonding Company right now and let our professional agents help. Harvey's Fish Hut is located on the corner of Airport Road and Old Whitfield Road in Pearl, Mississippi. Harvey's prides itself on having the best fried catfish in the metro area, as well as tasty pan trout. Harvey's Fish Hut only serves quality Mississippi farm-raised catfish. Dine-in or carry-out, Harvey's Fish Hut is always served hot and fresh, open Monday through Saturday for both lunch and dinner. So stop by and see Willie Harvey at Harvey's Fish Hut on the corner of Airport Road and Old Whitfield Road or call to place your order at 601-939-6262. 601-939-6262. Welcome back to Pearl Pirate Baseball. We're going to the bottom of the fifth inning. Pearl leading Yazoo City 6-5. For the Indians, it's Gabriel Campbell, Andre Lloyd, Jeremiah Bryant. Scheduled hitters facing Alex Hutton. First pitch from Hutton misses inside for a ball. One ball, no strikes to count. Now the 1-0 pitch. Grounded to the left side. Grant Phillips picks it up on the good hop. Throws to first on a strike and gets the out. And that's the way you're supposed to do it. That's exactly right. They really are not throwing it around today in the second game. You know, usually after a play like that, he'd throw it to short, to third, uh -huh. to second, back to the pitcher. The first just back to the pitcher. Andre Lloyd. Andre Lloyd, first baseman, steps in. He's been hit by pitch twice in the ballgame. First pitch swinging here and fouls it off. No balls, one strike to count. You'd have to think after being hit twice, you kind of feel like you got a target on your back. <laughs> yeah. Now the 0 1 pitch. Breaking ball fouled at the plate, bounces up and hits him. <laughs> 0 2 the count. Popped up, foul, out of play. Count goes 0-2 or stays 0-2. Want to thank DeSalvo's and Sonic Drive-Ins, our PMN Player of the Game sponsors for today. We'll have them in the announced at the end of this game. The first game was Zach Carter and Matthew McGee. Popped up, left side, shortstop. Grant Phillips calling for it and makes the catch to record the out. That'll bring with two outs, Jeremiah Bryant to the plate. Looking for a couple of others. Got some people we're going to talk to first of the week, try to secure that for the rest of the season. We'll have our PMN players of the game following each and every game. And we'll, of course, interview them and talk to them, but then they'll get a little certificate to go get some food. Hadn't seen a high school baseball player yet that didn't like some food. Didn't like some food, that's right. But thanks to Jessica DeSalvo, manager at DeSalvo's, and Stephanie McLean Fairley, who handles marketing and stuff for Sonic Drive-In. Fly ball to center field, caught by River Waghorst, and that ends the inning. One, two, three, go the Indians for the first time today. Alex Hutton sets them down in order. We played five, Pearl leads 6-5. 
Back in a moment on the Pirate Media Network. It's easy to have concerns about your cooling and heating system in the middle of summer, especially when you live in the Deep South. My friends at Hermetic Rush Services recommend you let them take away these worries when you call Hermetic Rush Services at 601-932-7874 for all your residential and commercial cooling and heating needs. You'll feel smarter from the shoulders up and a whole lot more comfortable head to toe. Hermetic Rush Services, where Rush is our middle name. Call them today, 601-932-7874. Pearl Stamp and Sign is now Sign Mart. Our name has changed, but not our great service. For over 20 years, we have been your number one hometown retailer in custom stamps, signage, and marketing products. Now we are growing and want to take you with us. Whether you have an event, starting a new business, or wish to expand your existing business, Sign Mart is committed to helping you meet your design and marketing needs. Come see the friendly staff at Sign Mart on Pearson Road in Pearl and make your mark in the business world. Top of the sixth inning, Pearl Pirates and Yazoo City Indians in game two of the Ridgeland Classic here at Ridgeland High School. Grant Phillips, Zach Carter, Brandon DeSalvo, and if one of them should reach, Zach Prince, top of the order for the Pirates. Phillips takes the first pitch for a ball. Grant's two for Grant's line drive right side over the head of the second baseman in the right field, a single by Grant Phillips. He's three for three in the ball game with a walk. So Grant's vying for that player of the game offensively for today's game. And that'll bring Zach Carter to the plate. Zach's two for three. Two singles and a ground out back to the pitcher. Pirates would like to add a little more insurance. Have a six to five lead, but they'd like a little more. Attempted bunt foul. No balls, one strike to count. Grant Phillips down at first. Zach Carter on deck is Brandon DeSalvo. Phillips three for three, Carter two for three, DeSalvo two for three with three RBI. Carter showing bunt, pulls up, takes it, outside for a ball, one and one to count. Infield in at third, halfway at short. Of course, first baseman holding on the runner, attempted to bunt it, has got to pull that bat back. That was well outside. One ball, two strikes, the count. Low and away, ball two, two and two, the count. Now the 2-2 pitch. Runner goes, swung on, hit well, left field. Left fielder's moving over, he's getting back. He's going to be there to make the catch, and Grant Phillips will retreat to first base. Pretty well hit by Zach Carter, but unfortunately right to the left fielder. He sent that one for a ride. That'll bring Brandon DeSalvo to the plate. The third Number 10, Brandon's Brandon two for DeSalvo. three, reached on an error. Now, first pitch misses outside for a ball. Now the 1-0 pitch, popped up, foul and out of play. Count goes one ball, one strike. Pitch no. misses for a ball. Will every game, win or lose, have players of the game? Yes. Awesome. Outside, ball three, three balls, one strike to count. Phillips at first, DeSalvo at the plate, takes it high, ball four. And that gives runners at first and second base with one out. And we're going to get a visit to the mound, and uh, we're going to get, well, he's, Saying his arm hurts, but it's his catching arm, not his throwing arm. Pitcher's coming to the coach saying, my left arm hurts, coach. But he throws with his right arm. So that's going to be a pitching change for Yazoo City. And if it's an injury, we'll get an extended time because of an injury. So 
We're going to step away, and we'll be back in a moment with more on the Pirate Media Network. Serving Mississippi since 1967, Mississippi Bonding Company is prepared to help in your time of need. Our agents are the quickest, most efficient, and most educated bail bonds agents in the area. We use state-of-the-art computer equipment and services to process all applications, credit cards, and deliver the necessary documents to get your friends and family released as quickly as possible. All jails, all courts, statewide and nationwide service, 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. In trouble? Call Mississippi Bonding Company right now and let our professional agents help. Actually, they did not change pitchers. The pitcher went over to the dugout, didn't go in. He leaned over the fence, did something, and goes back out, said, I'm ready to go. Don't know what that was. Either way, we got runners at first and second with Zach Prince at the plate. Swings at the first pitch. Strike one. Zach struck out twice today and walked into third. Struck out in the first and the fourth. Zach yet to get a hit in this 2013 season. Fouls that one off. 0-2 the counts. Quickly behind. We're in the top of the six with one out, runners at first and second. Phillips singled, then a fly out to left, and then a walk by the salvo. Runners go, throw down to third, and they get him on the tag. And I think it was a strikeout on Prince. It was a strikeout on Prince and a throw him out, so strikeout, throw out, double play. And that's going to end the threat by the Pirates. We've played five and a half. Pearl leads 6-5. Back in a moment on the Pirate Media Network. Harvey's Fish Hut is located on the corner of Airport Road and Old Whitfield Road in Pearl, Mississippi. Harvey's prides itself on having the best fried catfish in the metro area, as well as tasty pan trout. Harvey's Fish Hut only serves quality Mississippi farm-raised catfish. Dine-in or carry-out, Harvey's Fish Hut is always served hot and fresh, open Monday through Saturday for both lunch and dinner. So stop by and see Willie Harvey at Harvey's Fish Hut on the corner of Airport Road and Old Whitfield Road, or call to place your order at 601-939-6262. 601-939-6262. Pearl Stamp and Sign is now Signmark. Our name has changed, but not our great service. For over 20 years, we have been your number one hometown retailer in custom stamps, signage, and marketing products. Now we are growing and want to take you with us. Whether you have an event, starting a new business, or wish to expand your existing business, Signmark is committed to helping you meet your design and marketing needs. Come see the friendly staff at Signmark on Pearson Road in Pearl and make your mark in the business world. We go to the bottom of the sixth. Pearl hanging on to a one-run lead. Ralph Jones in the batter's box facing Alex Hutton. Takes it inside for a ball one. 1-0 one the count. Jones reached on an error back in the second. Singled in the third. So he's one for two today. That one hits him on the left arm. He'll go down to first base. That's the fourth. Hit by pitch for the Pirates. Two by Jimmy Boyd. Two by Alex Hutton. That'll bring Jeremiah Durr, the shortstop, to the plate. Matthew McGee's looking into the dugout for something like he was wanting, but I guess trying to figure out what kind of pick moves and stuff they may be doing. Runner goes, shows bunt. No throw down to second. It's called strike. The runner gets an uncontested stolen base. That's one of the things you, you can't see happen very often. You don't see that keep going. That puts the tying run in scoring position with a 1-1 count here in the bottom of the sixth. Showing bunt once again. The runner at second taking his lead. Matthew McGee sneaking in. Turn for a pick move, and Yazoo City back. I saw him working on that one the other day. Shortstop comes in, second baseman fakes. Shortstop goes around the runner, and then the second baseman comes into the bag. The pitcher's supposed to make sure the shortstop clears the runner before he turns and throws. Tried to bunt it and missed it. Strike two. One ball, two strikes to count. Not showing bunt now with two strikes. And not going to bunt it. It's going to swing away and going to get a base hit into right field. Carter's going to take it on one hop, come up, throwing to the plate. Overthrows the cutoff, man, but the runner's going to stay put. Good job by Zach Carter to get it in quickly to keep the runner from scoring. But that puts runners at the corners with nobody out. 
And top of the order coming up for the Yazoo City Indians. Got activity down in the bullpen for the Pirates. And that is 11. That's uh, David Pickering warming up for the Pirates. Showing bunt is Scott. They're going to pump to third, throw back, go look back to first. There's been talk in the major leagues about outlawing that move. Yes. That throwing down to cut off the runner and trying to get him in a rundown and going to throw behind him and got him. Great execution by the Pirate defense to get the runner out at third base. The pitch was a ball, I believe. Great execution. I may execution. have to get that from the umpire. I think it was a ball. But then the runner takes off from second to go on the steal. And they take the cutoff and throw the runner out. Great execution there by the Pirates. The short throw to the second baseman coming into the side, going to third for the, for the uh, quick throw there. It's a great play. I think Coach Groh is asking for sure what the pitch might have been. But Jimmy Boyd comes in from second and takes the throw that was going down and then immediately runs straight at the uh, runner like you're supposed to, get him to commit. As right. soon as he committed to go back to the bag, he throws in there and DeSalvo applies the tag to get the out. Now we're trying to make sure we get the count right. He held up one finger, but I'm not sure if it was one ball or one strike. I think they're saying that was one strike. Okay, I like that. We'll go with the strike. It looked like the pitch was high, but I don't think he ever pulled the bat back. And I think that's back. what Groh was talking about, is that he kept the bat out there trying to bunt it. But a great execution by the defense to get the out. Now with an 0-1 count. Runner still at second base. Catches the inside corner for a call strike. No balls, two strikes to count. Swing and a miss, strike three. Big strikeout by Alex Hutton. And now with two outs, Darius Wright comes to the plate. Again, the tying run down at second base here at the bottom of the sixth. Al Hutton's pitch stays up and in for a ball, 1-0 the count. You know, we talked about it at Northwest Rankin game where they walk Reed Humphreys and Benton Yancey comes up and you mm -hmm. get the opportunity and they do. They hit the end of the double play, ground ball to the shortstop, turns the double play perfectly to, to save yourself in that inning. And then you come up here with an opportunity where they got runners at first and third, something really fit to make something happen. And you do the cutoff throw from the stolen base and throw behind the runner. In the meantime, base hit into left field. Runner's going to round third and hold up. Here comes the throw. It's going to come all the way through. McDonald's going to stop it, and the runners will stay put. So now you've got runners at the corners once again. But anyway, you, you execute that to perfection. Right. Those are some little things. that Yeah, this is the first day of the regular season, second game. But those are the little things. You do those little things right now, mm -hmm. and as you go through this season, they're just going to start playing each other. You're going to gain more and more confidence that you can play this game. Absolutely. Trey Richardson steps in, center fielder, one for three. Singled in the first, grounded out, and reached on an error since then. Just misses outside for a ball, 1-0 the count. First and third, two outs here in the bottom of the sixth. One run ball game. Pickering been warming up in the bullpen for some time. He should be ready. Swing and a mi uh, fouled off. Runner was going. He'll go back to the bag. Now with a 1-1 count, right at first base, see if he takes off again. Going to do the pump to third and look back at first, try to catch him going. He wasn't going anywhere. Don't know if I would maybe try it again. 
See if he'll go this time thinking yeah. we won't try the same thing twice. And there he goes. Pitch is outside for a ball. He's going to pump fake it. Not going to throw it through this time. Two balls, one strike to count. Yeah, I think that would have been a good time to do that again. I think they had that in the works. Right now the key, Alex Hutton, is just get the batter out. You get the batter out, nothing else matters. Ground ball right side. Jimmy Boyd's going to pick it up, throw it to Matthew McGee, and he's low throw it. He can't come up with it. And that's going to be an error that's going to score that run. I'm going to charge that one on McGee. He should have made that catch. I don't think it was in the dirt. It's just low. Run scores. The other runner advanced to third uh, to third on the play. That'll bring Sam Campbell to the plate. Tied at six once again. Was tied at five. Was 2-2 after one. The Indians took a 3-2 lead. Pirates tied it at three. Then they took a 5-3 lead. Then the Pirates tied it at five. Then took a lead 6-5. Now the Indians have tied it at six. Had somebody score in every inning so far. Campbell is 0 for 3. He's flied to center twice and to left once. Left-handed hitter. Swings and misses. Strike one. Now the 0-1 pitch. Outside corner for a call strike. No balls, two strikes to count. Got to wonder, will we see Hutton in the bottom of the seventh or will we see Pickering come in in relief? Breaking ball just misses outside. Runner goes down to second, uncontested. He'll get the steal, credit for the steal on that. Outside ball two, two and two the count. For the Pirates coming up in the top of the seventh is going to be five, six, seven. Parker Thurman, River Horse, Austin McDonald. Line drive, Jimmy Boyd knocks it down but can't come up cleanly. And that's going to go in as a base hit. Runner's going to round third and score. And Indians will score two runs on the single pass Jimmy Boyd. That'll bring Gabriel Campbell to the plate. Boy, it went to it went and stopped the ball, but it caromed off his glove. He wasn't able to get the play the off. Five, to come Keon up with Jones. the out and two run score there. That hurts. Courtesy runner in is number five, Keon Jones. Running for Campbell, the catcher. Now Campbell, the right fielder, steps in. Number Runner goes, swings and misses. At, I don't know what kind of swing that was. That was a. I think he had a hit and run <laughs> on. I think he might have. <laughs> that was just a. <laughs> <laughs> and, and right at the end, the batter all of a sudden remembered, hey, I'm supposed to. Oh, wait, I'm supposed to swing at this. Yeah. <laughs> Man. Popped up, foul out of play. Pirates trailed by two here in the bottom of the sixth, eight to six. Bottom half of the order will be coming up for Pearl. They'll have to produce. Way up and in and over the head of Campbell all the way to the backstop. Runner's going to go to third easily on the wild pitch. Hutton's thrown 68 pitches. Swing and a miss, falling out of the batter's box, and that'll be strike three and the third out. But the damage is done. The Indians score three runs in their half of the sixth after six. They lead eight to six. Back in a moment on the Pirate Media Network. 
It's easy to have concerns about your cooling and heating system in the middle of summer, especially when you live in the Deep South. My friends at Hermetic Rush Services recommend you let them take away these worries when you call Hermetic Rush Services at 601-932-7874 for all your residential and commercial cooling and heating needs. You'll feel smarter from the shoulders up and a whole lot more comfortable head to toe. Hermetic Rush Services, where Rush is our middle name. Call them today, 601-932-7874. Harvey's Fish Hut is located on the corner of Airport Road and Old Whitfield Road in Pearl, Mississippi. Harvey's prides itself on having the best fried catfish in the metro area, as well as tasty pan trout. Harvey's Fish Hut only serves quality Mississippi farm-raised catfish. Dine-in or carry-out, Harvey's Fish Hut is always served hot and fresh, open Monday through Saturday for both lunch and dinner. So stop by and see Willie Harvey at Harvey's Fish Hut on the corner of Airport Road and Old Whitfield Road or call to place your order at 601-939-6262. 601-939-6262. Welcome back to Pro Pirate Baseball here on the Pirate Media Network. We're going to the top of the seventh inning. It's going to be Parker Thurman, River Weghorst, Austin McDonald, the scheduled hitters. They're going to have to have more than that. The Pirates trail by two. Thurman's one for two today. Takes that first pitch low and away for a ball. Wright has gone the distance through six innings. Nine hits, six runs, five of them earned. He's walked four and struck out seven. He's behind Parker 2-0 real quick. He has thrown 119 pitches. 120. That was 120 his 120. And now he's again saying that glove hand, his not non-throwing arm has hurt him again. And he's walking to the dugout, drops his glove at the foul line. And it's like he, I don't know what he, he took something from a coach or a player like he ate something or did something, which may be what he did a while ago when he went to the dugout. I'm not sure what he's doing. i got no clue what he's doing. He's now leaning over. And now he's getting a drink. Last time he did this, he came back, picked his glove back up, and went back on the pitcher's mound. Strange. I mean, he's only thrown two pitches since he had an inning break. So I'm not real sure what's going on here. Now there's a trainer that's going over to check on him. I don't know whether he's cramping. Maybe that's what he's doing. Maybe, maybe that's it. Uh, maybe that arm, that off arm is cramping. And that's what he's doing. He's cramping. That that, that, it's unusual to see that, but it's his glove hand. It's not his throwing arm, but it's cramping on him. And that's when he goes over and gets something to drink or – you know, I, I hear, I had a guy tell me the other day, and I've never heard this before, and I've been around athletics all my life, mustard. Huh. Just plain old yellow mustard. You can yeah. eat a spoonful of, you know, yellow, and, and it'll and it'll do it. take care of the cramps just like that. Wow. Okay. So maybe he's got some mustard over maybe, there. Maybe that's, maybe that's what he just, maybe that's a what packet he, of mustard. He, he just packet, squirted he, it in his yeah. mouth. Don't know that for a fact or not, but I did hear that the other day. He's getting his glove back, and after 120 pitches Golly. in February the – 23rd. Game one, game one of the season. He's thrown 120 pitches, and he's going to keep going. And he's wanting the ball Man. back and going back on the mound. Okay. Parker Thurman's got a 2-0 count. The Pirates in desperate need of some base runners. They trail by two here in the top of the seventh. Make sure and stay tuned. We will do some post-game interviews. That pitch misses low in the dirt. Ball three, three and oh the count. High ball four. Parker walks on four straight pitches. And now you just got to wonder how far he is going to go with him. Now the coach is going back out there again. And I think this time the coach has already said, nope, you're coming out of the game. We're coming off the mound anyway. He's been batting. In the number two spot in the batting order. Looks like he's going to switch with the right fielder. Looks like that is the case. We're going to take a break. We'll come back and sort that out. You're watching Pearl Pirate Baseball on the Pirate Media Network. 
Serving Mississippi since 1967, Mississippi Bonding Company is prepared to help in your time of need. Our agents are the quickest, most efficient, and most educated bail bonds agents in the area. We use state-of-the-art computer equipment and services to process all applications, credit cards, and deliver the necessary documents to get your friends and family released as quickly as possible. All jails, all courts, statewide and nationwide service, 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. In trouble? Call Mississippi Bonding Company right now and let our professional agents help. Serving Mississippi since 1967, Mississippi Bonding Company is prepared to help in your time of need. Our agents are the quickest, most efficient, and most educated bail bonds agents in the area. We use state-of-the-art computer equipment and services to process all applications, credit cards, and deliver the necessary documents to get your friends and family released as quickly as possible. All jails, all courts, statewide and nationwide service, 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. In trouble? Call Mississippi Bonding Company right now and let our professional agents help. Welcome back to Pearl Pirate Baseball here on the Pirate Media Network. We're at the top of the seventh inning. Pearl trailing eight to six. Got a new pitcher coming into the game. It's the right fielder who was playing right field. It's Gabriel Campbell now playing pitcher. And he'll be throwing to his brother, Sam. So now they're pitcher and catcher, brother duo here for the Yazoo City Indians. And going out to right field is Darius Wright. Wright. Went six innings, gave up nine hits, six runs, five of those earned. He's walked five and struck out seven. He's had four wild pitches, 122 pitches, 72 strikes, 50 balls. The runner at first base, Parker Thurman, is charged or would be charged should he score to right. Wright cannot get the loss because only one runner would be charged to him. He could get a win or no decision at this point in the ballgame. If the Indians hold on and the Pirates don't, at least tie it to force the bottom. The worst he can get is a no no decision, but he could end up with a win if they can hold on. River Weghorst steps in. He's one for two. He struck out in the third, singled in the fifth. And right now, Sack Bunt doesn't even help you. you got to get both these runners on base outside for a ball because moving Parker to second doesn't help at all because he just still keeps you one run away. Right now, you need base runners without outs. Now the 1-0 pitch, right down the middle, strike one. River crowding the plate a little bit. That pitch was good in there. Now the 1-1 pitch. He does bunt it, third base side. Third baseman's going to pick it up, throw to first, and get the out. And I don't know that I agree with that call. You do get a runner advance to second on the sack bunt. But now you have one out. And and you still don't have the you got the tying run at the plate, but you already had that. So I don't know whether maybe that was supposed to be an attempt bunt for a base hit, because River does have really good speed. Maybe that was it. Maybe it was just an attempt to bunt for the base hit, not necessarily the sack bunt. Austin McDonald takes a call strike. Now the 0-1 pitch hit high in the air, foul. Get out of play. No balls, two strikes to count. Pitch misses up and in for a ball. One ball, two strikes. Late swing just pokes it off. I think you might have thought it was going to be out of the zone, decided last minute. Maybe it's not, and I got two strikes and just <laughs> Maybe I need to, kind of need poked to protect it. it a little bit. Got away with it. That one's outside for ball two. Two and two to count. Matthew McGee on deck. 
Again, the runner at the plate represents the tying run. Here in the top of the seventh inning, Pirates trailing. Ground ball left side. Runner's going to go to third. Austin heading down to first. Not in time. He's going to be out by the shortstop to first base combo. And the Pirates are down to their last out. And it's going to be Matthew McGee at the plate. Parker Thurman's at third, but his run really doesn't mean a thing. That pitch down in the dirt. One ball, no strikes to count. Alex Hutton on deck. Outside ball two, two balls, no strikes to count. Call strike, two and one to count. Don't forget, stay tuned. We'll get our DeSalvos and Sonic drive-in. Our PMN, I got to say this right, it's our PMN, PMN player of the game brought to you by DeSalvos and Sonic drive in. High fly ball to the left field. Left fielder's getting under it and makes the play and records the final out. And the Pirates will lose this game. The winning pitcher is going to be Darius Wright. The loss will go to Alex Hutton. And the save will go to Gabriel Campbell. Time of the game, one hour, 51 minutes. We're going to be back in two minutes. We'll get down to the field with some post-game interviews here on the Pirate Media Network. Pearl Stamp and Sign is now Sign Mart. Our name has changed, but not our great service. For over 20 years, we have been your number one hometown retailer in custom stamps, signage, and marketing products. Now we are growing and want to take you with us. Whether you have an event, starting a new business, or wish to expand your existing business, Sign Mart is committed to helping you meet your design and marketing needs. Come see the friendly staff at Sign Mart on Pearson Road in Pearl and make your mark in the business world. It's easy to have concerns about your cooling and heating system in the middle of summer, especially when you live in the Deep South. My friends at Hermetic Rush Services recommend you let them take away these worries when you call Hermetic Rush Services at 601-932-7874 for all your residential and commercial cooling and heating needs. You'll feel smarter from the shoulders up and a whole lot more comfortable head to toe. Hermetic Rush Services, where Rush is our middle name. Call them today, 601-932-7874. Harvey's Fish Hut is located on the corner of Airport Road and Old Whitfield Road in Pearl, Mississippi. Harvey's prides itself on having the best fried catfish in the metro area, as well as tasty pan trout. Harvey's Fish Hut only serves quality Mississippi farm-raised catfish. Dine-in or carry-out, Harvey's Fish Hut is always served hot and fresh, open Monday through Saturday for both lunch and dinner. So stop by and see Willie Harvey at Harvey's Fish Hut on the corner of Airport Road and Old Whitfield Road or call to place your order at 601-939-6262. 601-939-6262. Serving Mississippi since 1967, Mississippi Bonding Company is prepared to help in your time of need. Our agents are the quickest, most efficient, and most educated bail bonds agents in the area. We use state-of-the-art computer equipment and services to process all applications, credit cards, and deliver the necessary documents to get your friends and family released as quickly as possible. All jails, all courts, statewide and nationwide service, 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. In trouble? Call Mississippi Bonding Company right now and let our professional agents help. Pearl Stamp and Sign is now Sign Mart. Our name has changed, but not our great service. For over 20 years, we have been your number one hometown retailer in custom stamps, signage, and marketing products. Now we are growing and want to take you with us. Whether you have an event, starting a new business, or wish to expand your existing business, Sign Mart is committed to helping you meet your design and marketing needs. Come see the friendly staff at Sign Mart on Pearson Road in Pearl and make your mark in the business world. The Yazoo City Indians by a score of 8-6. to six. The first game defeated Northwest Rankin by a score of 4-3. to three. Standing with me, Zach Carter. Zach gets the win in the first game. Zach, first thing, uh, how big was it to beat Northwest Rankin in that first game today? It was a uh, big game. You know, we've never beaten Northwest uh, as long as I've been in high school and I'm a senior. You know, it's a privilege to beat a good team. And uh, I felt good on the mound. And uh, I was nervous, you know, a little in the first inning, but I holded them down, you know, to the fifth until they took me out. 
Zach, uh, had to feel real good about that. Your thoughts on this season? Obviously, a disappointing loss and not happy about that uh, with the second game. But your thoughts on uh, the beginning of the season right now? Yes, sir. Uh, you know, it's a tough loss. We came out strong and beat Northwest, but uh, I think we was focused more on the Northwest game than th this game, and uh, it's a big upset, and I think uh, we wasn't worried about Yazoo, and they beat us. All right, Zach, congratulations. Good job in the first game. You got uh, one of our players of the game. We did the DeSalvos and Sonic tribe in player of the game. You'll get a DeSalvos card. I'll get that to you next week. Yes, sir. Thank All you. Right, good deal. That's Zach Carter. Congratulations. I was looking for my other two to look at they're coming, so we'll try to grab Coach Justin Grow and get him down here. Uh, looking for him right now. They're standing on the other end of the dugout talking. See if we can get Coach Grow. Coach Grow's not looking this way. Now Coach got Coach Groves' attention. He's going to get him coming this way. And get his thoughts on this opening day of the 2013 season. One and one, the record for the Pirates. Coach Justin Grow. Coach, first off, we didn't get a chance to talk prior to the game. Uh, we had some technical issues, but uh, obviously a very exciting first game, a very disappointing second game. If you can take your thought process so back to before even the first game, when you look at this team, you had them last summer, played some summer ball. You worked with them just in conditioning throughout the rest of the summer and in the fall. Some pretty good work during the winter. Do you feel, where is this team right now with where you hope to be? I, I feel like we're where we need to be to compete uh, against anybody. It's just, it's all about us focusing for seven innings on every pitch and making it through that. If we can, if we can focus for seven innings, we're a pretty good ball team. We lack focus, and that happens. You lose a ball game. One of the things, in fact, Justin and I were talking about that uh, in the booth during the second game, that uh, it seemed like a totally different team, first game versus second game. How much of that has to do with just the players and an attitude of being up so much and so focused, ready to play against the Northwest ranking team? You get a big victory, an unusual thing. You see a pile on on the field for a victory after the first game of the year. Then you come into Yazoo City, maybe just not mentally prepared. That's absolutely right. I mean, no, nobody picked us to win the first game. And when we did, it took a lot out of the guys, but there, there's no excuse there. you, you got to come out and play every game, regardless of who's on the field. And, I mean, we preach it. There's nobody in the state that's going to beat us unless we beat ourselves. And you saw that. I mean, first game, we played pretty good. You know, we let up one inning, and they attacked us. But um, second game, we let up four or five innings. You know, just lack of focus and beating ourselves. Coach, a couple of key defensive plays that stood out in my mind as I looked at the day in the two games. One, uh, with runners at second and third, we give up a walk to Reed Humphreys to face Benton Yancey. We made the comment in the booth that that's not necessarily a bad walk with Reed at the plate. Uh, Benton Yancey not quite as fast a runner. If you get him hit a ground ball, you get a potential double play. It's exactly what happened. We get out of the inning with the double play, maintain a two-run lead at the time. The other one here in the second game, when they've got runners at first and third, they send the runner. We throw in with the cutoff move. Jimmy plays it perfectly, throws in to get the runner out at third base. Those tight plays are plays that will give confidence going forward in the season, won't they? Oh, yeah. I mean, we're, we're in good shape. That, that's one ball game. And, you know, none of these games mean anything uh, in, in our standings in our conference. We, we play for a nine-game season. Right. So, I mean, all this gets us prepared for that. Good deal, Coach. Thanks a lot. Congratulations on a big victory. I know a tough loss, but uh, get ready to go to Mid Mississippi Classic next week. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thanks, Coach. Head Coach Justin Grow, obviously excited with a big victory against Northwest Strankin. Disappointed, on the other hand, with the loss against Yazoo City. The way the players played just wasn't there. They didn't have the same intensity. They didn't have the same focus. Didn't have the same motivation in that second game that they had in the first game. Nonetheless, they come out with a, a split. Really, a lot of people around, if you ask around the city of Pearl, ask around Rankin County, you would have had most people say, well, Pearl would probably go up there and split in the, Yazoo, in the Ridgeton Classic. They'd probably lose to Northwest and beat Yazoo City. Well, we did it the other way around. Big victory against Northwest, so it gives a lot of confidence to this team, believing they can play with anybody. We're going to step away, take a break. We'll come back. Justin will pick it back up in the booth. We'll give you some stats. I'll join him. We'll wrap up today's game. You're watching Pearl Pirate Baseball on the Pirate Media Network. In times of joy, in moments of grief, we are there. When the world looks for truth, broadcasters come through, even when all else fails. Today, with more ways than ever to experience the moments that transform our lives, 
Americans still choose broadcast television and radio more than all other media combined. Television and radio are still the most trusted sources for news and entertainment. And our web and social sites are among the most visited sites in our daily lives. When important moments happen, both big and small, we're the first informers to history. We are the pioneers, the innovators, the local broadcasters of radio and television. Reaching more people, touching more lives. It's easy to have concerns about your cooling and heating system in the middle of summer, especially when you live in the Deep South. My friends at Hermetic Rush Services recommend you let them take away these worries when you call Hermetic Rush Services at 601-932-7874 for all your residential and commercial cooling and heating needs. You'll feel smarter from the shoulders up and a whole lot more comfortable head to toe. Hermetic Rush Services, where Rush is our middle name. Call them today, 601-932-7874. Pirates fall in game two today to Yazoo City. Eight to six, your final score. Looking at some game stats for you. First for the Yazoo City Indians. They have eight, they score eight runs. Uh, looking at their uh, combined stats here. First, we'll talk about the pitching. Wright had, uh, went six innings, gave up nine hits, six runs. Five of those were earned. Um, his ERA now a 5.83. Campbell came in for the save. He, he has a, he pitched one inning, gave up no runs, no hits. Uh, none of his, obviously no earned runs, but seven strong innings uh, of pitching that, that, that they came through in the end when it counted, which is what they wanted to do. Scott, the uh, left fielder, uh, he batted three times, had uh, three strikeouts, right four at bats. He had two hits on the night. Richardson also had two hits on the night. Campbell had one hit. Lloyd, one hit. Jones was one for two, as was Durr. He was also one for two. But the uh, Pearl Pirates, let's look at their stats. We'll start with batting. Uh, Phillips, he was three uh, three hits. He had three hits and three plate appearances. He also scored three runs tonight. He also had a double. Carter, two for two for four. Uh, he also scored two runs. DeSalvo, he was two for three. Thurman, one for two. River, River Weghorst, uh, he uh, scored a run tonight. But uh, pitching stats for the Pearl Pirates, Alex Hutton went five innings, gave up five hits, five runs, four of which were earned. He didn't walk, he didn't walk anybody. He struck out three, and he hit two batters. L uh, <clears throat> Boyd, Jimmy Boyd started the game, went one inning, gave up two hits, three runs, one of which was earned. He walked one, struck out two, and also hit two batters. A rough night for Jimmy Boyd, but gave Alex Hutton the opportunity to come in and, uh, and pitch well, just not well enough for the Pirates to win. We're going to take three. We're going to take 30 seconds. We'll be back right here on the Pirate Media Network. Harvey's Fish Hut is located on the corner of Airport Road and Old Whitfield Road in Pearl, Mississippi. Harvey's prides itself on having the best fried catfish in the metro area, as well as tasty pan trout. Harvey's Fish Hut only serves quality Mississippi farm-raised catfish. Dine-in or carry-out, Harvey's Fish Hut is always served hot and fresh, open Monday through Saturday for both lunch and dinner. So stop by and see Willie Harvey at Harvey's Fish Hut on the corner of Airport Road and Old Whitfield Road or call to place your order at 601-939-6262. 601-939-6262. Welcome back to Pearl Pirate Baseball here on the Pirate Media Network. The Pirates, a disappointing loss by a score of 8-6 to six against the Yazoo City Indians after defeating Northwest Rankin 4-3. Uh, Justin, or is it 5-4? Uh, I've already forgot. It was 4-3. It was, uh, it was, <laughs> was one run, either yeah. way you look at it. Yeah. Uh, but, Justin, when you look at this, and you heard me talking to Coach Grow, you could tell this Pearl team, when they came over here today, they were focused on one thing. They were focused on beating Northwest Rankin. Yeah. Once they did that, they had such a huge letdown. It was just like, we've done it. It's right. over. Right. But you can't have it. You've got to try to play another game. And that's something they're going to have to learn this year because there are going to be some other big games coming up this year that you're going to have to be able to play one and win or lose. You've got to put that behind you and get the next one going. And that's the beauty I've heard of baseball. When you lose a game, you look at the major leagues, you look at the minor leagues playing 140, majors 162, we're going to play 28, 9, 29 games. You've got another one coming up usually pretty quick after the last one. Right. You've got to be able to win or lose. You've got to be able to put it behind you, 
go to the next game. That's right. What you got to do, that's key. You know, and days like this where you got to play back-to-back -back games, double-header games, that's going to happen. Those days are going to come, and you got to be able to play one, turn around, refocus on the next one, but keep going. Keep that intensity up. Keep that focus up. That's really hard to do, but this team has got to learn how to do that if they want to be successful going forward this season. I was impressed, though, with uh, some of the defensive play I saw of the guys today as I talked to Coach Groh. Of course, the double play in the Northwest Ranking game at a critical point in the game. Uh, the one, three, uh, first and third base situation. You throw it through to second, but the cut off and get the guy out at third. Of course, ended up, they ended up scoring some runs anyway and taking the lead. But they executed that particular play at that time to perfection. And those are the things this team has to be able to do. Some things we didn't see them able to do last year. Uh, they made some mistakes. They actually should have made. They did commit three errors in this game. Uh, they did have two in the first game, so that's five total. Of course, the two in the first game, they were both, as I'm talking to Coach Lyle, those were hustle errors. Right. Uh, you had a, a Alex Hutton trying to complete the double play, a little too high on the throw. Uh, the other one was the drop foul error that uh, Parker Thurman had. It was a tough play coming in, but it's one you want to see him play, but it's a hustle-type error. If he doesn't as hustle as hard as he did, he didn't even get there to, to drop it. That's right. And so uh, that's right. you, you got to look at a lot of possibilities. Yes, you hate to lose a game like you just lost to Yazoo City when you make the errors, you make the mistakes you make, you didn't play the game you should have played. But at the same time, you take the positive away that you see some good things done well at good times. That's right. That's right. Disappointing loss, exciting win. The, the toy of the emotions, the, what do you call it, the old wide world of sports, the thrill of victory and the agony, agony of, of defeat, defeat. That's and right. how quick they can come right behind the other. But it's been a lot of fun today. We've kicked off our baseball season in style here at Risen High School. Uh, they do a great job of hosting us, give us great facilities. It's been a great place here today. We've enjoyed being here. Uh, Justin, as always, good to have you back on board with me in the booth and uh, look forward to next week yes. when we have the Mid-Mississippi Classic coming up. Of course, Monday night we'll have a softball game. Make sure and stay tuned for that. It's been a great time here today. Folks, we thank you for watching today and thanks for joining us here on the broadcast. Thanks to our camera operators. We had Sim Stingley down the third baseline. We had Carol Davis down the first baseline. We had Perry Lowry up here in the booth with us. Roy Harper directing in the trailer. Frank Hutton, our executive producer, making it all happen as always. Don't forget, today's broadcast of Pearl Pirate Athletics is intended for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast, downloads, or copying of any type without the expressed written permission of the Pirate Media Network is strictly prohibited. Thanks to Sonic Drive-Ins and DeSalvos for sponsoring our players of the game today. We'll be going that throughout the season, but we thank for them stepping up today. Until Monday when we have softball and next Thursday when we're back for baseball, I'm DP saying good night, everybody. <laughs>